Love God, love people. That's the plan. That's what we do here. Uh, that's what we were doing yesterday. We were just giving out the, um, the bracelets to anybody and everybody. Uh, some of the people um, were very accepting and wanted to ask questions. We were looking for t-shirts, wanted to know what was new. We were able to give the gospel out that way as well. Some people were rejected, and, that, and that's fine. Um, um, they don't reject, they're not rejecting us as people. Um, they are ultimately rejecting God. And, and so I can't, I can't be offended by that. I just have to say, hey, that's their choice. That's, uh, and I hurt for those people, but at the same time, that's their choice. But we had a good time out at the, out at the parade. Rob and Strohsnyder is going to be out at Winchester Park today handing out what we have left of the bracelets. Uh, if you're going out there, I know we're headed out there afterwards, which means my wallet's going to suffer some more. But uh, but God is good. So uh, let's um, let's pray and then we'll jump right into this. And I'm going to be quick to the point. I believe God has given me something to tell you. And um, you're here for a reason. And I believe you're going to walk out of here with a new thought. And, and God's going to show you something. So let's pray one more time before we get going. Dear Heavenly Father, God, right now we pray for your Holy Spirit to show up. God, we pray for something uh, that's um, supernatural to happen, God, in somebody's heart, God. That we have the testimony like Michelle just shared where we go from that all that religion and mumbo jumbo and all that stuff, God, and we get something real today, God. And that's what my prayer is, God. I pray that even while I'm preaching as the pastor here today, God, I pray that you would change my heart. God, forgive me of things where I failed you. God, bring me to a point where I need to know you more. And God, I pray that you change me today. Lord, I pray that's the prayer of this, these people. God, give us a great day. Make us bold. Let us get out in our community and just love people to Jesus. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Um, my, my message today is uh, survival. Go ahead and pull up. There it is. It takes, it takes revival for survival. Um, I got a couple of thoughts yesterday while I was riding home. I was listening to the Lynchburg station. I, I'm not even sure what it is, 90.1 or 3 or something like that. Uh, it's a Lynchburg station, and they had a, a guy come on. He was hit. They quoted something from the National Day of Prayer, and, and he said, um, Godliness. Uh, go ahead and pull up the next one. Godliness is a matter of national security. I thought, man, what an what a awesome statement that is. And then his thought after that was this, and this is what I want to share with you. He said, There's, uh, we can look around. There is no government that can take care of the issues that America has. There is no president that can, listen, I don't care what party you're in. There is no president right now that can take care of the issues that America has. There's no army. There's no um, revolution. <laughs> Michelle mentioned in her uh, statement that um, she watched that Heaven's Gates Hell Flames thing and it scared her to death. Scripture says in the last days, and I don't want to jump into all that right now. That's a whole other message, and we're going to get to that for sure. But Scripture says in the last days, there will be wars and rumors of wars. That we're going to turn into a... a, a um, everybody's going to use the same money. Everybody's going to be... Um, you, you'll be put on a credit card machine that will run through your wrist and your forehead. I mean, this is all scriptural. It's all coming. You can look this stuff up. It's all coming. But I also believe... It doesn't have to happen now. If we'll turn ourselves back over to Christ, we can prevent that from happening so that you don't lose some friends and family. Some of your friends and family, co-workers, don't miss God. I believe that the rapture is actually a judgment on our country or our world. And if we'll turn back to God, we can prevent these things from happening. But godliness is a matter of national security. If you're looking for someone else to bail us out, it's not going to happen. Now, go ahead and pull up the next one for me. This, is what I, this was my next thought when I was coming up with that. Revival 
will not happen when people start getting saved. We get that confused a lot. We have these revivals at our church. We go out to the lost community. We start bringing all these people in. We want to, we want to go out to Apple Blossom and go find the guy with the crazy tattoos and the green hair and all that. That's great. I, I want those people too. But revival won't happen that way. We're not going to go get those people. Revival will happen when the saved start acting like it. The word revival it says that in itself. What we want is we want to go out and have a big church. We want to go out and have a big group. We want to have more friends. So we go get a bunch of lost people and we bring them in. But revival means that I was, listen to what that means. I, I was almost dead or dead and someone brought me back to life. That's what needs to happen in our churches. That's not going to happen in the world. They don't know him. If we're going to have revival, it's going to start right here. And I put on there about my picture. I put their hands being raised because that's what I want. That's my prayer. My prayer is, God, you'll start with me. You'll start with what's new. You'll start within the churches. And you'll start with some of these teenagers that are sitting around you. You'll start in here because it won't happen unless we as Christians start doing the things that Christians are supposed to do. Now, God gave us a method on that. We're going to get into that method. Go ahead and pull up the next one, Second Chronicles. If you have your Bible, you don't need it. Uh, but this is the verse they're reading for today. Second Chronicles seven fourteen. Here is the method. Here is what needs to happen. And, and I, I'll say this: we we talk about our country. We talk about the world needing revival, and that's that's the whole idea: is the world needs revival, the uh, our country needs revival. But the reality is, our you need revival. Not just church, not just country, not just world. It's going to start... With, uh, watch, watch what it says. Watch, 2 Corinthians seven fourteen. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin, and then I will heal their land. Now watch, I want to show you some things. Go ahead and pull up the next one. You've got to know your heritage. Um, I put on there, I'm a child of God. That's what Scripture tells us. I, I, wanna, I want you to know this. Um, and I say this every, every week or very often. Uh, you were fearfully and wonderfully made. God had a plan for you when He put you together. When you were in your mother's womb, He designed you. I mean, put, put some significant time into who you were going to be, what you were going to look like. You can look around. Nobody looks like you. Nobody talks like you. Nobody has the same gifts that you have. All of us are different. So we've got to recognize our heritage. Go ahead and pull up the verses for me. John 1, 12, it says, But as many as received him to them, he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. Go ahead and pull up the next one. Romans 8, 16 and 17, The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. Now, I want you to think about the responsibility you have there. Heirs with God, joint heirs with Christ. The responsibility that drops on us when that happens. Now, first of all, you, you are connected. If Once you accept Jesus Christ, and maybe you're not at that point yet, uh, and maybe some of you have got that religion that Michelle was talking about, but once you, once you connect with God, you connect with this supernatural power. I don't know if we understand that. You have a God you can go to over any little thing. One time I remember I was, we went to the Baltimore Orioles game on a bus and I had a hot dog that didn't sit right with my stomach. <laughs> Shocking, right? So we were on the way home from uh, the game and my prayer was, God, please don't let me throw up on this bus. Instantly, I, I promise you, instantly, the headache went away, the stomach ache went away and I made it all the way home. And I stepped off the bus and threw up. That's, that's what I'm getting to. That's, that's what I asked for. Instead of saying, God, heal me. Just, just keep, me, keep me well on the bus ride. Literally, as soon as I stepped off the bus. It, it, and the reason I say that, and you know, we do that kind of stuff. But sometimes we'll, we'll lose our keys. 
My wife's, my wife's laughing at me. Yesterday we looked for probably 20 minutes for her keys and they were in my pocket. <laughs> we, uh, we, we lose our keys. We'll um, forget to do something. And we'll, listen, and we, we, I, want, I want you to know this. This is what I'm trying to say. We've got a God that doesn't just want to take care of the big problems in our life. He, he wants to help us with those little things. He wants us to go to Him over those things. If you, if you lose your keys, go ahead and stop and pray. God, please let me find these keys. I, I, a friend of mine on Facebook yesterday couldn't find his shirt for work. And um, he, uh, I, I don't even know why I'm sharing this, but it was funny to me. He couldn't find his shirt. He called his work, said, I can't find my shirt. They only give him one shirt. So he ended up finding his shirt underneath of his bed uh, about 20 minutes after he was supposed to be at work. So he said, I grabbed my shirt, uh, took off rushing to work, and then he uh, got out to his car and realized he locked his keys in the house <laughs> with no cell phone. Um, so anyway, we, we, need to go to be, we need to be able to go to God over all these. This is the heritage that you have. He's saying, if my people, he, he's saying you're called by my name, if my people, you, you have a right, you have a, you have a right, I, I want you to get this, you have a right to go to the creator of the universe and ask for favor. Isn't that awesome? I, I was watching a thing from um, Louis Giglio, is that his name? I'm not sure how you say it. He, he showed this picture, it looked like a... It looked like when you um, when you open your windows at the house and light comes in, you see all the dust flying around, and there was one like one shinier piece of dust. <laughs> and he said that was that was that was Earth. It was a picture of space. It was a picture of Earth and all these little other tiny specks of dust. And we get to go. Listen to me. You get to have. If you know God, you get to have a personal a personal connection with that God. Isn't that awesome? What an awesome thought that he, he takes time out of whatever God does during the day. To spend time and know... He, Andy lost his keys again. Andy can't find his phone. One time I promise you I was on the phone with my wife looking for my phone and I said this. Christine, I have no idea what I've done with my phone. Yeah, act like it hadn't happened to some of you guys. All right, all right. I'm the only idiot here. But we get to have a connection. We get to have a connection with this awesome God. But a great responsibility. Pull up the next one for me. I want you to see this picture. Um... Man, that's true. This is our reputation. If you go around and ask people why they don't come to church, I'm going to tell you that the top answer is going to be, I feel judged. It's a click. Um, they look down on me. That's, that's, those are going to be the answers you get. I know. I mean, that's what I do. That's what I do. That's what I do all the time. I'm asking people to come check out church. I'm asking people to check out who God is. Check out the Bible. Just and, and this is our this is our reputation. If my people called by my name, and the, you know what I when I was thinking of God told me this week, He said um, the Scripture said um, there's, this is some of our excuses. We feel like we can go around and judge people because of the Bible verse that says. They hated me first. You, you, you've heard that, right? You, you go around, even even some of the people that were, you, you get out here, on, we were down in D.C., and the, these guys are out there on megaphones up on top of their little box, and they're screaming out, you're going to hell, you're going to die, and, and all this. And, and, it, it, and th those are true things. I, I mean, those, are, those things are going to happen. I, I believe that. But at the same time, if, if we're just casting judgment all the time, um, they, they don't know about this God that loves them. And, and, and I was thinking, I, I, this is what I was thinking. This is what God told me this week. I want you to get this. When Jesus said that they hated him first, you, 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 that wasn't the world that, was, that had the problem with Jesus. I, I want you to hear this. 
the world was good, man. He was going around hanging out with people. He, he was in their villages. He was healing the sick. He was making the lame uh, walk again. The world, the world was good with Jesus because he was loving on them. The people I believe Jesus was talking about, he said that they're going to hate you, were the Christians, were the church people, were the Pharisees, the hypocrites, he called them. Man, this should not be our reputation. I, I, I want you to know this. You can go out into a world and tell people that Jesus loves them. You can go out into a world and even tell them about hell and tell them about... You can tell them the truths of the Bible. The world, the world doesn't have issue with that. Matter of fact, they crave, they want to know. I, I share with you guys about the Seven Project when, when the gospel was given at the Seven Project in Jameswood Middle School and the teenagers flooded the altar. Not just flooded the altar, they ran to the altar. I, I want you to know that the world, for the most part, we handed out 2,400 wristbands yesterday. We want to believe that everyone's supposed to hate us because we're Christians. That's just not true. We were handing them out fairly easy. Very easy. They were just taking them. As a matter of fact, they were reading it and saying, love God, love people, that's what I'd like to do. People were saying these things. Very rare was it a person that was offended. But we've got in our mind that we're supposed to make people angry with us. That we're up in their face and telling them what's wrong and this is, this is not what to do. That is not your right. You give them God's Word. You give them Scripture. That's fine. You give them the truth. That's fine. But it is nowhere in Scripture where God has told you to judge anybody. I'm sorry it sounds like I'm yelling at you, but I am. <laughs> we, we can't do that as a church. All over our country there are churches today where people are screaming that stuff. There is a God that loves people. and matter of fact, people are craving Him. They just don't know Him. They don't want to hear, um, and like again, it's not that it's not true. It's just the way that we approach it. They don't want to hear, you're going to hell, going to hell, everything's messed up in your life. Most of them know that. They know things are spinning out of control. They know that their lives are messed up. They know that there's no hope. They know that there's a spiral going on. They know everything's messed up. Offer them hope. Tell them about this Jesus that... <laughs> This, this God that did everything humanly possible for them to know God as Savior. And if we'll, start, if we'll start sharing God that way, listen, for some reason we've got this thought, oh well, they hate me, I'm just going to pray. I've heard this, man, I heard it this week. They hate me, I'm just going to pray for them. We, we use prayer as a smack in the face. I'm serious, listen to me. Somebody gets mad at us and we'll say, well, I'll pray for you. <laughs> it's funny, but listen how wrong that is. We've just used the gospel to turn somebody away as a slap in the face. That's wrong. Watch what Scripture says here. Go ahead and pull it up, Matthew 7, 4 through 5. How can you say, how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when all the time there's a plank in your own eye? You, look, I want you to see this. See that word in red. You hypocrite. But we could probably stop right there. You hypocrite. First get the sin out of your own life. Get the plank out of your own eye. And then you will see clearly. Then you can help your brother. Help him remove the speck from your brother's eye. Listen guys. Some of us go around using this thing as a... As a uh, we, it's a sin the way you're using God's Word. I mean I don't know how else to say it. We, we can't do that. We can't get in a fight with somebody and go, I'll pray for you. That's, I mean, it's wrong. If you sincerely want to pray with them, do it right there. Say, hey, you know what? Maybe I'm not clear. Maybe we're, we're having some issues. Let's you and I pray. Let's pray together. Can I pray with you on this matter? Maybe not pray for you. Let's, can we pray together? Let me pray with you. See how that changes a little bit? Then I'm not using the Bible to smack somebody in the face. I mean, that's just what we do. 
That's why when we go out to the world, they don't show up at church. That's why they're, they listen to what we have to say out on the street. That's why they're accepting the bracelet. But that's also the reason why they didn't show up here today. This one being honest. Go ahead and pull up the next one for me. Show humility. We've got to know our heritage. We've got to know who we're connected to. But we also have got to show humility. And, and um, I don't know. I don't know if we're there yet. I was just listening to the the Sunday school material we've got with Kirk Cameron, and he said he was at a church where nobody got saved, but this one this one young guy at the back of the church and. And uh, he, he went back to see if the guy really got saved. And he said he got back there and the guy couldn't even talk because he was sobbing. And he said, we've done a lot of this. And, and I'm just sharing, this is off the, off the cuff this morning because this is just from in there. And he said, uh, you get, we get some of these people, we bring them forward, they all come forward. We've got this false Christianity thing going on in our country where people come forward. And he said, now if you sincerely, if you, if you say this prayer from the bottom of your heart, if you really are asking God to forgive you of your sin, repeat after me. And he said, you'll, you'll go, please Jesus, would you save me? And he looked back and the guy's kind of chewing his gum. And he goes, uh, yeah, please Jesus, uh, save me. Kind of that thing. And we've, we've, we've convinced people that, that this is a new high or a new drug to try or, or something cool. And we really aren't connecting them with who God is. Show humility. Pull up the uh, scripture verse. Psalm 139, 23 through 24. You've heard this verse. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me. Lead me in the way everlasting. I, I want you to have, and God wants you to have, the purest relationship with Him possible. If we could go around and somehow put a light bulb up or a little movie screen over top of each of your heads that showed us your secret sin, or showed us who your past looked like, it would get pretty embarrassing in here, I'm sure. If we're going to get to know God, we need to be ready to say, God, this is me. Humility. Humble. Go ahead and pull up the uh, next verse. It, that says, show me my sin. Sorry, I keep forgetting that that stupid light does that. Show me my sin. I'm, I'm going to ask you to pray that even now as throughout the rest of the message. What is it? We talked about our heritage. You've got this awesome God. He's got an awesome plan for you. And, and the reality is most of us don't fulfill that plan because we get caught up doing silly stuff. So what is it? What is it? What is it that's keeping you from God's best? Some of us love the sin that we're in. We love the fact that we can go get plastered and not think about everything. Some of us love the relationship that we're in that we know that we shouldn't be in. Some of us love the addictions that we're involved in. Some of us love looking at the stuff that we're looking at. Some of us love listening to the things that we're listening to. Some of us like sharing the gospel. Some, we, we, some of us, we just like, we like sin. And you will never get God's best. By like and sin. Go ahead and pull up the next one for me. That's my son. I'm probably going to cry. So, But you all were planning on that anyway. That's my son. That's his first day of school. Right? The other night uh, we were playing a Disney, a Disney game. With um, you all seen it where they put the card, you put the card on your head, headbands. You know what I'm talking about? It has a Disney character on it. Then you've got to ask clues of who the Disney character is on your head or whatever it is. And um, um, we were sitting around playing it, and, and Caleb uh, uh, Caleb dropped the card that was going on his head, and I saw him, I saw him look at the front of the card. 
and then he put it on his head real quick. Well, it was it was the Disney slipper, right? Cinderella Cinderella slipper, and in Caleb's first question, because he's not very good at lying, his first question is, "Am I a shoe?" <laughs> And um, I said, Caleb, did you see? Did you see that? And he said, No, sir. And I said, Caleb, you're lying. And and um, uh, we had this battle. This isn't so much about the situation with Caleb, but this is us. Now, I want you to see this. Um, I, we sent him up to his room. I went up with him. Caleb, did you see the card? No, sir, I did not see the card. Caleb, there's going to be consequences if you don't tell Daddy the truth. I didn't see the card. Caleb, there's no way in the world you knew that that was the Disney slipper. Daddy watched you. Look at the card and put it on your head. Caleb, did you see the card? No, sir, Daddy, I didn't see the card. Caleb, we're going to have to start taking things away from you unless you tell Daddy the truth. Now listen to what I'm saying. Daddy starts taking wrestlers away from him. He loves this WWE wrestlers. One by one, I'm dropping them in a trash bag. Caleb, did you see the card? No, sir, Daddy, I did not see the card over and over and daddy's going uh, I'm saying Caleb please all you have to do listen to what I'm saying please all you have to do is tell daddy the truth if you tell me the truth we fix this Daddy loves you. We fix this. The relationship's fixed. We can work on getting your stuff back. That can all happen. But you have to tell Daddy the truth. Now, I say all that, and the reason why I'm... Because this is us with God. I kept saying, Caleb, this hurts. It hurts daddy so much. Please just tell me the truth. Go ahead and pull up the next slide. I want you to see this whole thing because it says God opposes the proud but he shows favor to the humble. And the part that I want you to see here is watch this. It says wash your hands you sinners and purify your hearts you double minded grieve. Mourn, wail, change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and He will lift you up. And instead we keep saying, Daddy, I didn't do it. I'm not guilty. And I believe that God is up there doing the same thing as I was as a dad. I was, please just tell, this is hurting Daddy. This hurts me so much for you to not get this right because if you'll get it right, if you'll just get it right, if we'll just lay the sin out, if we'll expose ourselves, if we'll humble ourselves and tell the truth, if we'll come to the point where the truth is all that matters and we'll say, God, I am guilty, then what God wants to do is what I wanted to do. I wanted to hug my son and start the relationship from that point on. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? Go ahead and pull up the next one for me. we got to ask for help. It says if we seek, as we're His people. If we'll humble ourselves, then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll pray. Go ahead and pull up the verse for me. Psalms 3, 4. I want you to see these things because I think we've taken our Christianity and we've taken our sin and we've looked at things too casually. It's been too casual. I'm just going to ask for forgiveness of sin. I don't know if we realize how much we've hurt God. I don't know if we, again, that was the, the, the moment for me this week. I'm going having this relationship with my son and I'm just, 
I'm begging him, just please get this right. If you'll get this right, the, I can start taking some of the punishments away. I can start taking that butt kicking away. I, I can take those things. I can, we can start the relationship from here. Daddy can love on you again. You can find favor in your father again. I will start loving you and blessing you. And Not that I quit loving him, but you know what I'm saying? I can, I can, bestow, my, I can bestow blessings back on my child because he has an honest relationship with me. And if we'll do that with God, that's what he's waiting for. But we've got to weigh that sin out. We've got to say, God, I am guilty. Because we're fighting him. Some of you are fighting him even today. We're holding on to this. And I, I, I highlighted the word cried because that's what... That, that's what I, I don't want to make you upset, but when we realize what we've done to God, it should bring us to that point where we weep and cry and say, God, I need you. I cried to the Lord with my voice and he heard me from his holy he'll go ahead and pull up the next one for me and then when we get rid of the sin when we ask for forgiveness of sin when we ask for the help we've got to learn to hate sin when Caleb and I had that talk after when he finally confessed I said yeah daddy I saw it Please, next time, just tell Daddy the truth. Just tell me the truth. If you tell the truth, everything's going to be okay. If you tell the truth, everything's going to be okay. Listen to me, folks. If you tell the truth, if you tell, if you tell God the truth, if you'll go ahead and tell Him, He knows. He knows the darkness that's going on in the back of your mind. He knows those little things that you struggle with. He knows what you think about. He knows what you've been listening to. He knows what you look up at on the Internet. He knows these things. And if you'll just start telling him the truth, then we can turn from these things. We can run from him and he'll help us. But we've got to be willing to do that. And, and we've got to will, be willing to hate sin. And pull up the uh, verses here. Proverbs 28, 13. It says, He who covers sins will not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes. We've got to confess and then forsake. I don't want to be in my sin anymore. I want to run from it. I want to stay out of it. And I'm going to need help because I am a failure at things. I mess up. I cannot listen to me. The same thing that we were talking about America. There is not a human being alive that can take care of the sin condition that I have. Is only Jesus. Oh, you hear what I'm saying? Go ahead and pull up the next one for me. Ezekiel. 18, 31, and 32. Rid yourselves of all of the offenses you have committed. Get a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, people of Israel? Why are we choosing? Why would you choose to hold on to these things? Because we're not humble. We're too prideful. We want to keep this all to ourselves. We want to keep this secret person to ourselves when the God of the universe knows who you are. And for some reason we think we're hiding. We're like Adam and Eve. We've sinned. We're naked and we're running around trying to hide from God and He knows where we are. So he says, why would you die, people of Israel? For I take no pleasure in the death of anyone, declares the Sovereign Lord. Repent and live. It seems like an easy choice. It seems that that's what God's saying. It seems like an easy choice. If you'll just please, son, would you just tell me? Would you just tell me where you messed up? I know already, but if you'll tell me, we can start the relationship from here. Are you hearing me? Pull up the next one for me. Then, if we'll turn from our wicked ways, the scripture says, then, then he gets to hear from heaven. Then, the prayer requests matter. I, I, I'm going to have to do some more study on this, but that word then, and I, don't take me at fact on this, but what if that means, what if that means that no other prayer matters until I've confessed to him and repented? Maybe there's some, maybe there's a reason why your prayer requests aren't being answered.
Scripture says, and, and then, until then, until then I, I, then, I will hear their prayers. Then I will hear their prayers. Then I will hear their prayers. After, after they've repented, after they've laid that humility out, after they've said, I am, God, this is me, this is who I am. After they've done that, after they said, I'm guilty, after they've come to repentance, after they've been on their face crying, after they realize how awesome God is, once they come to that point, then... I will hear their prayers. Are you there yet? Are you ready for that? You have a connection with a supernatural God or you have an opportunity for a connection to a supernatural God that can do supernatural things in your life. But maybe he's just that daddy saying, would you please just tell me the truth. If you'll tell me the truth, if we can get the truth out today, if we can get the truth out today, I want to do so much for you. But until then, listen, until then, you're going to sit in your room. Until then, I'm going to start taking blessings from you. Until then, you're going to be in trouble. Until then, things are going to be rough. Until then. Are you hearing me? Pull up the last one. Not only will he hear, but he will heal. That relationship with me and my son, man, I love my son. Love him to death. He says some of the funniest stuff. Have you ever been around my son? I, he is a Hulk Hogan fan. Daddy couldn't be prouder. He's never even seen the man wrestle in real life. It is real, you know. The other night... The, all right, I've got to tell the truth. The other night we were watching a wrestling match and uh, it was an old match. He watches it before he goes to bed and all of a sudden my son went like this. Then he went like this. Then he started going like this. Daddy was so proud. I, I absolutely, lesson what I'm trying to say is, and I love my daughter. My daughter, you would think that she wouldn't be in the wrestling. My daughter loves all that stuff too. So we have a lot of fun. But what I'm saying is when, when the relationship's right, now, think about it even with your own kids. Even yesterday, if you'll sit down, if you'll listen, if you'll just sit there and be quiet, if you don't ask me, ask me, ask me, Daddy wants to buy you one of those uh, dollar things that they're selling for $45. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I want to. I, I want, listen to what I'm saying. I want to bless my kids. I want to bestow blessings. I want to give them things. I want them to be happy. I want them to do some awesome things. I want to take them to the carnival. I want to take them to the zoo. I want to, I want to do awesome things with my kids. But some of that requires me and them to have this relationship. It requires them to say, Daddy, this is the truth. Daddy, this is how I'm supposed to live. I'm going to be obedient. Are you hear what I'm saying? Because that's the same thing that God was trying to tell us with our heritage. He said, these are my children. You are my children. I want to, I want to love you. I want, to, I want to care for you. I want to do awesome things in your life. But you have to keep this relationship pure between the two of us. And if we'll do that, if we'll be humble, if we'll confess our sins, if we'll turn from the wickedness, then God will hear from heaven and you will be healed. Then the relationship's good again. Let's bow our heads in prayer. I'm going to... This might sound weird. I want the Holy Spirit for the next few minutes to talk to the real you. I want you to go ahead and pull that person up that, that you think nobody likes or nobody could love. I want you to pull up that person that has been looking at stuff they shouldn't have been looking at. I want you to pull up that person that's been drinking stuff that you shouldn't have been drinking or smoking stuff you shouldn't have been smoking. I want you to pull up that person that gossips. I want you to pull up that person that's depressed. I want you to pull that person up. I want you to put that person, I want you to put that person in front of the Holy Spirit right now. That, that side of you that's so dark. That side of you that wants to be in the sin. That, that side of you that desires sin. I want you to put that person in front of God. And say, God, examine me. 
Some of you need to tell God the truth today. God, I've messed up. I've blown it. This is how I failed. This is the truth. Some of you need to be humbled that way. Some of us need to be turned from our sin and run. And I'm guilty of these things too. I'm not standing here's a man that thinks that he's better. But I'm standing here's a man that believes that God's told me to tell you this. He wants to talk to the real you today. Tell God the truth. Your head's bowed and your eyes go. You say, Pastor Andy. I want my prayers to matter. I don't know God. Today at What's New Worship, I need to find out how to meet Him. Your head bowed and your eyes, you say, Pastor Andy, I need to know God. If that's you, would you just look up at me real quick? I need to know Him. Amen. Amen. Don't let me miss you. Too important of a decision. You guys that just looked up at me, here's what uh, this is what you need to know. Scripture says this. If we confess our sins, you tell God, and you do this any way you want. You tell God right now, any way you want, any way you want. You just be real with Him. Be as real as you can be. This is the, this is the wicked me standing before God. God, it, uh, this, these are my sins. Confess your sins. Say, God, forgive me of my sins. The Scripture says we confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sin. And then you do this. This is the cool part. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You say, God, I want Jesus to be number one in my life. I want to have this relationship restored between me and God. I'm telling him the truth today because I want my relationship restored with God. If you just prayed that prayer, and maybe you didn't look up, but you just prayed that prayer. If you just prayed that prayer, would you look up back at me? Amen. You prayed that? Mean it? Praise the Lord. You pray that prayer? You mean it? Praise the Lord. Don't let me miss you. If you prayed that prayer, if you pray that prayer? Amen, buddy. Don't let me miss you. Don't, listen, it's too important. Don't let me miss you. If you prayed that prayer, this is the, this is the humble part. I, I prayed it, Pastor. I prayed it and God saved me today. If you prayed that prayer, look up at me. I don't want you to, I don't want to miss you. Praise God. Praise God. Christian family, we just got some brothers and sisters. Amen? Now, Christians, I'm going to close with this. Pastor Andy, I've been battling some stuff, fighting God. I've been fighting him, warring with the devil. There's some stuff in my life I know needs to go. There's some stuff that I got cleared up today. Even while you were speaking, I, I got some things cleared up. And, and today, I restored I restored my relationship with God. If that's you, would you just look up at me so I can pray for you. Amen. All over. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's close in prayer. I'm going to pray for you guys. And we're going to have an awesome week. We're going to go out and change the world. Amen. Let's pray. Father God. Thank you for today. Thank you for your word. Thank you for convicting us. Thank you for breaking our hearts. Thank you for uh, showing us that we need to repent, turn from our sin. Thank you for those that were saved this morning, God, and, and that were humbled today and that are even weeping right now. They're crying, God, because they know that you love them. They know that they needed to tell you the truth, God, and, and now the relationship can start. So, Lord, we praise you for that. And, God, I pray for those that are your children, God, that have been messing up, that God maybe have been lying to you, maybe have been hanging out in their sin, God, and maybe they've, they've been wondering why they're just sitting in the room not going anywhere. Maybe they're wondering why blessings keep getting taken away from them, and God, they're waiting for they're waiting for you. So this morning, this morning they were calling out saying, God, I'm sorry, forgive me of my sin, God, and now these awesome things can start taking place again because God, you love us, you want us to, to prosper, you desire us for uh, uh, to live a life and live life more abundantly, so we praise you for that, God. Bless your people this week. We love you and praise you for who you are. In your precious name we pray. Amen. You're dismissed. Get around and meet somebody. If you got saved, tell somebody because that's awesome. Amen. Amen. Amen.